the SP404 a very powerful little unit, especially when it comes to performance. Uh, there are, I guess, two main ways that I can think of to do performance with this unit. I mean, more than two, but kind of combining the two will kind of create, uh, create them more. So today I wanted to talk about how I can eventually use these two performance uh, side uh, separately and then together. And uh, yeah, let's start. So the kind of well-known performance aspect of the SP404 is of course the uh, DJ mode. So DJ mode is technically a three channel mixer. Uh, you get the first uh, two right here, and then you can access the third channel by clicking the pattern edit. But right now I will just uh, focus on the main thing, which is the two channel mixer. I'm not really going to dive deep too much in DJ mode, but I'm kind of just going to show how I use it and what are the kind of uh, cool things that I try to do with it. So uh, let me just try to maybe load up something. So right now I have two channels. So kind of my kind of way of using the DJ mode uh, is uh, using the two bus effect that is given. So we have uh, two buses uh, right here. You can select which bus is, uh, is on which channel. Uh, you can just press on remain and choose, uh, for example, this one will go to uh, dry. So bypass all the buses. This one will go to bus one or this one will go to bus two. Essentially, this is a more of like going from one track to the next, not necessarily like a doing like a crazy remix, although you can though, you can, you can definitely. But for me, for example, in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the second channel into bus two. Now, of course, in this sense, uh, what I'm trying to do is uh, mix from channel one and transition into channel two. So uh, the typical idea is that you want to go to your bus two. And what I do is I would uh, use the isolator into bus two. And then this will kind of allow me to remove some of the more easily audible uh, frequency in the set that would eventually kind of clash with the, the what's on uh, the channel one which in this case is, uh, is uh, I guess, the kick. So let me go back to this. I will try to, let's perhaps play what is on channel two. This is what is on channel two. This is what it starts with. So what I want is I want to remove as much low as I can because I want to uh, kind of slowly introduce this so that will eventually help you blend more within the first track now something i also do when i'm kind of trying to 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 kind of do this transition is also preparing track one because the this isolator i always keep it on on bus two so then when the this the second channel start then it's already affected by the isolator on channel one, which is will be my main track as I go, I also like to add a uh, isolator. But for the channel one, I like to keep them uh, keep it a little bit neutral. That is kind of I guess a typical way of doing the transition, which is more of an EQ transition. So like uh, I EQ out one, and then I raise boost and kind of plan uh, the EQ between the between the two tracks. And of course, the layout of the DJ mode allows you to, to sync Q. Uh, there is also a bend of the of the of the tracks. Uh, you can change the tempo. The I mean, it depends if you want to use the sync. Uh, I guess that's more of a personal <laughs> DJ thing. But if you don't want to use the, the sync, then this allows me to, for example, channel one is my master. And if my second channel is not matching the, the same speed of channel one, then I can eventually bend it uh, a little bit. Uh, of course, this is kind of to have when you have, uh, to do when you have uh, relatively matching BPMs, because even if you match stuff, if the BPMs are different, then eventually you fall apart. 
So anyway, uh, I guess how we would do this is a bit of a demo, I guess. So right now I'm in channel one. Channel one is going, is going, is going. To kind of make it easy, uh, let's set up the the walls. So let's. There's no rolling for like two bars. If I want to try to introduce the channel two, I'm not going to sync. I'm going to kind of listen uh, to match it right here. In my headphone in my queue, they are kind of matching. I still have the isolator on uh, channel 2. So I'll start to bring it slightly. You start to kind of hear that it's coming. Right. Now, this is easier because both are in. Uh, loop but eventually something that that you can do is to kind of start playing the other or start lowering the other one up to you something I do is that I leave EQ on the second uh, on the second uh, FX uh, shortcuts although the EQ doesn't really do much it kind of helps in like doing uh, lighter transitions That's kind of a, to simplify the kind of, a, a, I guess, a very simple transition. No, because of the limitation of the SP, I've encountered some uh, immediate kind of a uh, limitation. The first one is uh, when I select an FX. So, for example, I'm in the, I'm still in the the bus one. Let's activate the the. The isolator right now these knobs are at maximum meaning they are at the maximum right now the the parameters are on the opposite end especially for the low end so what it does is that there is a jump in the value so when you're kind of doing like a quick mix that kind of ruins things like right now if i'm going to trying to put this somewhere in like a graduating uh, in more of a gradually increasing uh, value of the low notes it will you have to do it like really quick because right now it's you see you kind of jump from like very low to somewhere here so you kind of have to do it very fast that's that's one of the major limitations that I've, uh, I've uh, encountered of course, with time, you kind of find your own little kind of a little, I guess, try to apply some of the little DJ stuff. One thing that I really like is uh, the delay. So, for example, I'm going to put this into 1.8. Then let's say it's, it's at 100. So it should sound like this. 
right? So right now we see the delay is at 100. The effects uh, is very audible. And there is this thing called mute bus. It's shift plus a bus effect. So what you can eventually do is, uh, uh, well, playing. And then you... You kind of put the delay and then mute the bus. Kind of give that little gradually uh, lowering the, the volume uh, type of effects. Again. And the cool thing is this, you don't have to reactivate or re, uh, re-disable <laughs> to re -disable the delay because the bus mute does it for you. But anyway, I think that's that will be uh, the little thing that I wanted to go over the DJ mode, which is the kind of the first-ish way to do performance that I think at least to do performance in the uh, SP404. Uh, the other one is like a, I don't know if this is, this has a real name, but I think it's more of like a, like a sequencer launch thing. So I will jump into uh, the software of the SP. I will try to stay in like, because of most of the songs on the DJ sets are like one, 20 ish another thing i found about the sp i don't know if this is this is like a if there is a way to uh go around this but when you go into the to the companion software and you want to change the bpm this is just an uh an output display meaning this is just a printout display this is not like a input value i wish this was like a input value so i can just double click and then type in the bpm all right so now that we are set all is 120 and the bank itself is also 120. So now if I go back to my SP, I need to, the first thing I guess, because right now these are uh, in gate mode. So what I need to do is uh, trigger them into one shot. Uh, I can do it in the the companion uh, software or I can just do the, this is the thing about the SP44, I think you need to like write notes down kind of like your own kind of knowledge base of these things because there is so many stuff that I easily get lost. Uh, I think it's this type of my thing and gate. And when it blinks, I think that's when it is in one shot mode. So right now we check, you see on the companion, it says one shot check. Uh, I'll do it in the companion software because that's that's way faster. All right, so now that the samples are ready, uh, the next thing is to go to the sequencer, kind of to sequence this into the clip. Uh, is is there a name for this? So I managed to go to TRX, which is mode dot uh, real time TRX. My samples are two bars, so I'm going to set them for uh, two. Uh, my set is one twenty. Now, in order to for me to find my pads because I want to, to input every single one of these into the first step. So what I would need to do is uh, press uh, sub pad and then enter everything on the, on the first step. So now exit and now everything when I want to press on the first, first uh, pattern sequence, then all my loop works. I can mute. Eventually, I will leave. I uh, stay on mute. So that is kind of like how you can get into this mode of like the the clip launcher thing. Uh, now the cool part is trying to combine the two. Uh, it is possible. Uh, in this case, the the main function will be the DJ mode. So now I have this song on the the first channel. If I want to go to the third channel, which is the pattern sequence, I go here. So now I can uh, raise the volume. Now to make things a little bit easier to, to hear, I'm going to go back to my main, uh, main uh, channel. And I'm going to apply a little bit of a, a little bit of an EQ to it. And then I'll go back to, to my third channel and it should be audible. Then 
And if I go back here and go back to my, uh, here is the other thing. Now this is on, this knob is on maximum, but here is not on maximum, so I kind of have to. So what you hear now is the channel one, which is on loop. Which is on loop, constant uh, two, two, two bar loop. And then I have channel three, which is the, the pattern sequence that is playing on top of this loop right here. So that is a way eventually it can perform. Uh, but yes, those are the kind of combination of two. You can still access the pad modes. So if you have like uh, even more drum loops, melody loops, any loops, you can. So you can play a lot of stuff on top of this. Uh, but yes, like anything, this comes with its own limitations. Uh, one, I guess my main kind of uh, not necessarily limitation. This one is not really a limitation, but it's kind of like uh, require a quick action, which is the jump in value that I was talking about later. Uh, that I was talking about earlier. If you're in like different uh, value, especially if you use like the isolator as like an EQ to EQ up the tracks, eventually you have to kind of get into the habits of like quickly jumping between values as you try to change the crossfaders, the volume, like the effects, any sort of thing, you kind of have to be quick about it. Another limitation, I'm not sure how this should work, but uh, Right now I have the two songs, yes? Channel one and channel three. Now if I go to the sequencer, I can't use the... Uh... I can't use the pad mute. Right now I'm in this, this sequence. I cannot use the pad mute anymore. Even though I'm in pad mode, as I mentioned this here, cannot pad mute these. So these are like running as long as my sequence is running. Now the workaround, not really a workaround, but the thing about this is like, this means that you cannot run one sequence. Like uh, like previously when you're in like a club clip TRX, TRX mode clip launcher. This will, you in this you have to like have one uh, pattern and then another pattern and then another thing. You have to have multiple patterns where you, if you want to drop some stuff or young people want to drop the, the snare from this uh, sequence, then I will have to have another pattern where the, just the snare is off. A uh, third pattern where I change the bass or stuff like that. I mean, not change because that would be an eventual different patterns but if I want to play around with the current existing patterns I want to drop some stuff I can't or at least I haven't found anything so again if you know help me out best I cannot go into pad mute so all pads are by default on uh but yes that's 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 all man this is a very cool way to kind of perform on the SP kind of like the combination of this three of course, with such a small unit, you kind of have to stretch the the capabilities a little bit, I guess. And it also requires a bit of uh, uh, creativity. The way I kind of use this is that I have my uh, my main two channels where I have songs, uh, songs, full songs by someone else, by myself. And then on the TRX, uh, or the third channel, I have uh, little loops or my own like stems. 
it it's it's all at the end of the day it comes to the to the creativity i guess that you have on how to use all of these setups uh it is good on its own like i said i would like if, if i can ask for like a few uh improvements the one that i i really think would be great is to have the software companion be easier to set the bpm uh, perhaps not just display the value, but allow us to enter uh, input values as well. Uh, but yes, that's that's little performance machine. Great performance machine does a lot of things. Uh, so yeah, thank you for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.